North Sudan appears to be massing a significant convoy of forces in the troubled southern Kordofan oil state, the site of many recent clashes. According to Reuters News, the U.S.-based satellite Sentinel project says it identified a regiment of 1,000 troops and military vehicles on Monday in a queue over two kilometers long in Kadugli. Meanwhile, the government in Khartoum is unveiling a new map of Sudan, outlining what the country will look like after the split on Saturday. Now, the official map shows a reduction of Sudan's territory by more than 25%, but includes the disputed Abyei region. The United Nations says South Sudan may become an official member as early as next week. The UN Security Council is expected to recommend the new nation's membership on July 13th, with a full General Assembly vote the next day. And as the Republic of South Sudan prepares to make its debut on Saturday, the new government there is opening its borders to foreign traders, business people who can supply goods, labor and expertise to help build South Sudan's economy. Paul Ndiho has that story for us. After the comprehensive peace deal for Sudan was signed in 2005, foreign traders fill the gap left by the departure of many northerners. Vendors from neighboring countries are rushed to southern Sudan, hoping to cash in on opportunities there. The South, after decades of conflict, has almost no capacity to manufacture essential goods, and almost everything needs to be imported. South Sudan is due to declare independence from the North on Saturday, and authorities are eager to build a robust environment for business to build their economy. Bagat Myong Chan with Ivory Bank in Juba says Juba has become a budding area of commerce. They have been marginalized even in, in, in terms of uh, there was no investment in the South before. People have not even didn't acquaint themselves with the trade. Not many people were trading because trade uh, even in the north here, you know, before the, before the agreement, most of the traders were northerners. Chan says business people from neighboring countries are cashing in on supplying goods to the south. Yeah, they are hopeful. There is, there is investment. And especially after the, after the north closed the, the borders with the south, uh, a lot of people have come to us for investment to bring in goods, to bring goods from East Africa. Elizabeth Mungai from Kenya came to Southern Sudan in 2007 and now owns a shop selling imported general provisions in downtown Juba. She says she has no plans to leave and hopes for even bigger profits after July 9th. Because I've been here for all that time, through referendum, the elections have been here, the separation, all those things have been here. So I believe there is no problem. Not only small traders are grabbing opportunities in southern Sudan. Banks, construction, agricultural companies, telecom and financial firms are cashing in as well. Jihad Gliani, a Lebanese businessman who came to South Sudan in 2008, contracts with the government to supply vehicles. He operates across uh, South Sudan and uh, employs more than 30 people. But Galiani says investors have one need in particular. If we have land with proper land documentation, proper layouts, proper uh, titles, then loads of investors will come, buy land, lease land, develop. South Sudan government says it aims to attract $500 million in foreign direct investment over the next five years. South Sudan becomes the world's newest country on July 9th, under the 54th nation on the African continent. Paul Ndiho, POA News.